Byron Singh's leadership is crucial right now. For the Maite, he represents a strong voice. His resignation would be a significant blow. It would be seen as a retreat, a weakening of their position. The Maite community needs him to stay strong, to be their advocate. The pressure on him to resign is immense. But stepping down would be a mistake. It would be interpreted as giving in to outside pressures. The Maytai need him to stand firm, to protect their interests. His presence is a symbol of defiance. It is a message to the Kuki and their supporters that the Maytai will not be cowed. He is a lightning rod, drawing criticism but also galvanizing his community. The Maytai see him as their protector. They believe he understands their concerns and will fight for their rights. His leadership is essential for navigating this crisis and ensuring the Maytay's future in Manipur. The demand for the removal of the Assam rifles is strategic. This demand is not a sudden or impulsive decision, but rather a calculated move that has been brewing for some time. The Assam rifles have been a significant presence in Manipur, acting as a neutral force amidst the ongoing tensions. It is not simply about distrust in the force, though that sentiment exists. Many locals have expressed their dissatisfaction and distrust towards the Assam rifles, citing various grievances and incidents that have eroded their confidence in the force. However, the underlying reasons for the demand go much deeper. It is about paving the way for future action. The removal of the Assam rifles is seen as a necessary step to clear the path for more decisive and potentially aggressive maneuvers. The strategic implications of this move are significant and far-reaching. The Assam rifles, as a neutral force, are seen as an obstacle. Their presence is perceived as a hindrance to the plans and ambitions of certain groups within Manipur. The neutrality of the Assam rifles means they do not take sides, which can be seen as a barrier to those who wish to assert their dominance. Their presence limits the Meite's ability to act freely. The Meite community, in particular, feels constrained by the Assam rifles. They believe that with the Assam rifles out of the picture, they would have more freedom to pursue their objectives without external interference. With the Assam rifles gone, the field is open. The removal of this neutral force would create a power vacuum, allowing the Meitei to move more freely and assert their influence more effectively. The Meitei will have greater latitude in dealing with the Kuki. This newfound freedom would enable the Meitei to take more direct and possibly aggressive actions against the Kuki community which they see as a rival. This is a calculated risk, but one they seem willing to take. The Maite leaders are aware of the risks involved in removing the Assam rifles, but they believe the potential benefits outweigh these risks. They are prepared to face the consequences of their actions. The removal of the Assam rifles would change the dynamics on the ground. The power balance in Manipur would shift, leading to a new set of challenges and opportunities for all parties involved. It would embolden the Meite while making the Kuki feel more vulnerable. The Meite would feel a surge of empowerment, while the Kuki community would likely feel increased anxiety and insecurity. This could lead to an escalation in violence, which may be the intended outcome. The removal of the Assam rifles could trigger a new wave of conflict, with both sides preparing for a potential showdown. The demand for removal is a power play. It is a strategic move designed to shift the balance of power in favor of the Meite allowing them to assert their dominance more forcefully. It is about control, about who dictates the terms of engagement. The Maite leaders want to be in a position where they can set the agenda and dictate the terms of any future engagements with the Kuki. It is a clear signal that the Maite are preparing for a more aggressive approach. The removal of the Assam rifles is just the first step in a broader strategy aimed at consolidating power and preparing for potential conflict. The rhetoric labeling Kukis as outsiders is dangerous. It is designed to dehumanize and marginalize an entire community. This narrative is being carefully constructed and disseminated to sway public opinion. By painting the Kuki as foreigners, the Meite aim to delegitimize their claims to land and identity within Manipur. This serves to justify any actions taken against them. It creates a narrative of us versus them, making conflict more likely. This tactic is not new. It has been used throughout history to sow discord and incite violence. By labeling a group as outsiders, you create a sense of fear and resentment among the majority. This makes it easier to manipulate them. The constant repetition of this narrative is having an effect. It is seeping into the public consciousness, poisoning the well of understanding and empathy. 
This is a dangerous game that could have devastating consequences. Section 4. Preparing for Confrontation, a Show of Force The Maite are not simply relying on rhetoric, they are actively preparing for a potential escalation, making it clear that their intentions go beyond mere words. Training sessions for volunteers are being conducted with a sense of urgency. Young Mai Tai men and women are seen donning combat gear, participating in drills and learning tactical maneuvers. This preparation is not just for show, it is a serious commitment to readiness. The acquisition of state machinery and resources, including bulletproof vehicles, is a clear indication of this. These vehicles are not just for transportation, they are a symbol of the Meite's readiness to protect and assert their position. This is not about defense, it is about offense. The sight of Meite youth marching with weapons and the disciplined formations of the militia all point towards a strategy that is aggressive in nature. It is about being equipped to take the fight to the Kuki, to dismantle their bunkers and establish dominance. The conflict zones in Manipur are dotted with bunkers, and the Maite's preparations indicate a clear intent to challenge and overcome these fortifications. The message is clear, the Maite are ready for war. Their rallies, often featuring a strong military presence, are designed to send a powerful signal to their adversaries. The use of state resources raises serious concerns. Government vehicles and other state machinery being utilized by the Mai Tai militia suggest a level of support or at least acquiescence from higher authorities. It suggests complicity at a higher level, a willingness to use the machinery of the state to settle what is essentially an ethnic conflict. This involvement of state resources in an ethnic conflict sets a dangerous precedent. This is a dangerous precedent to set. The intertwining of state resources with ethnic conflict can lead to a further escalation, making it harder to achieve peace and stability in the region. The preparations are a show of force, designed to intimidate the Kuki and their supporters. The display of military might is not just for the Mai Tai's internal morale, but also to send a clear message to their opponents. It is a clear signal that the Mai Tai are not backing down that they are willing to use any means necessary to achieve their goals. The aggressive stance at rallies, the visible presence of weapons, and the overall atmosphere of readiness all contribute to this message of unwavering determination. Community meetings and discussions on strategy further highlight the collective resolve of the Meite. These gatherings are not just about planning, but also about reinforcing the community's unity and shared purpose. Leaders addressing the crowd with rallying speeches emphasize the importance of their cause, urging everyone to stay committed and prepared. The speeches are filled with calls for solidarity and action, reinforcing the community's resolve. Even cultural events have taken on a martial theme, with traditional dances and performances reflecting the community's readiness for conflict. These events serve to keep the spirit of resistance alive and to remind everyone of their shared heritage and goals. The community's support for its volunteers is evident in the resources and encouragement provided. Training sessions are well attended, and there is a palpable sense of pride in the young men and women preparing to defend their community. As the final preparations for conflict are made, the Meite militia stands ready. Their formation, discipline, and the resources at their disposal all point to a community that is fully prepared to face whatever challenges lie ahead. Section 5. The Endgame and the Media's Role The endgame, though unspoken, is clear. The dominance of the Maite in Manipur. This dominance is not just a matter of cultural pride or historical significance. It is a calculated move to establish control over the region's socio-political landscape. This involves the subjugation, if not the expulsion, of the Kuki people. The Kuki community, with its rich heritage and deep-rooted presence in the region, finds itself increasingly marginalized and under threat. The current actions are all geared towards this ultimate objective. From legislative maneuvers to on-ground aggression, every step taken seems to be a part of a larger, more sinister plan. Zalengam Media plays a crucial role in this narrative. It is not just a passive observer, but an active participant in shaping public opinion and driving the agenda forward. It acts as a mouthpiece, disseminating propaganda and misinformation that supports the Maite agenda. Through carefully crafted messages and selective reporting, it paints a skewed picture of the conflict. It fuels the flames of hatred and division, making peaceful coexistence impossible. 
The media's portrayal of events often exacerbates tensions, leading to a cycle of violence and retribution. This media outlet operates with impunity, spreading its poisonous message far and wide. The unchecked flow of biased information creates an environment where misinformation thrives and truth becomes a casualty. It incites violence and justifies the persecution of the kooky, all under the guise of protecting Meite interests. The narrative constructed by Zalinga Media often portrays the kooky as aggressors, thereby legitimizing the harsh measures taken against them. The situation in Manipur is a tinderbox. The region is on the edge, with every incident having the potential to spark widespread unrest and violence. The actions of the Maite, fueled by inflammatory rhetoric and supported by outlets like Zalangam Media, are pushing the region closer to the brink. The continuous barrage of provocative content keeps the populace in a state of agitation. Only a concerted effort by all stakeholders can prevent a catastrophic escalation of this conflict. Dialogue, understanding, and a commitment to peace are essential to defuse the situation and pave the way for a harmonious future. Stay informed and get the latest updates. Subscribe to Zalenga Media for more in-depth coverage and analysis.